Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on my channel. My face is back to normal, which means my talking will be back to normal. My hair is looking a little bit funky, but I really didn't want to take the time to style it today, and it was looking even weirder when it was down, so we're just gonna go with this. But anyways, I'm super, super excited to get into today's video. So today we're going to be talking about a real life case of werewolves. Now the reason that I decided to talk about this is because I feel like vampires and werewolves and ghosts and all of that stuff is kind of attributed with Halloween and the season of fall and the month of October and everything like that. So I thought that this was a perfect Halloween themed video and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So with that all being said, let's get right into today's video. So today's case takes place a very long time ago in 15 1889 in Benburg, Germany. And today we're going to be talking about a man by the name of Peter Stump. Now, the spelling of this man's last name is very, it varies. There's three different ways that I've seen it being spelled, so I could be pronouncing it incorrectly because some places spell it S T U M P, some have spelt it S T U B B E, and some have spelt it S T U B. So, I'm not really sure exactly what his last name was, but it's Stump or Stubb or something along those lines. Now, he lived in Bedenburg, Germany, and he was well known in the community, he was well liked and known to be a very rich and well off farmer. Now, he was a widower, which made people kind of take a little bit of pity on him, but overall he was well known in the community, he was liked. He had two adolescent children, a son and a daughter, who now obviously didn't live with him and he was just your average normal guy back then. He did his farming, he was very good at it, that's why he was pretty wealthy, that's why he was highly respected in the community. He was just your average normal farmer type guy. Born in the 1500s, but the exact date that he was born on is unknown, and the exact year in which he was born is also unknown. Now, Peter went through his entire life known as Peter Stump, but it is believed that that was possibly not his actual name. Now, many people believe that his actual name was Abel Griswold. Now, the reason that people think that people started to call him Stump is because Peter actually was missing his left hand, and the only thing that was left where his left hand should have been was a stump. It is also believed that he was born either in Bedenburg or somewhere very, very close to Bedenburg because he lived there pretty much his entire life, as far as people could recall. Now, this next piece of information is something that I found very interesting, but in the uh, 1500s, sorry, um, actually, werewolf trials were a very popular thing, just like the witch trials, but they obviously weren't as popular nowadays and people don't read about them as much, but people were actually being tried because they were believed to be werewolves and they had to prove that they weren't a werewolf in order to not be executed and I think that's just crazy. I didn't know that until I started looking into this case, but yeah, there was werewolf trials that were really, really popular in the 1500s. The village of Bedenburg started to believe that they were being tormented by a werewolf who could possibly live amongst them when they started to find their livestock torn apart and mutilated and having their insides just thrown everywhere. Now that didn't really concern the village very much. I mean, of course they were worried, but they weren't too, too worried. But shortly after this started to happen, many of the women and children who lived within the village started to disappear. And that is when everybody just started going absolutely crazy. Now some of the bodies of the missing people actually did end up showing up later, and they were brutally, brutally found. Many of them were missing their flesh as if somebody had been eating them or feasting on them. And of course, this led the village to jump to accusations. They started to accuse each other of who could possibly be doing this. And they were really, really on the hunt for somebody to pay the price for who was causing and wreaking havoc on the village of Bed. Unclear the exact reason why people started to look at Peter as if he was the werewolf, but it was speculated that Peter was possibly having an affair. And it turned out that the woman that he was having an affair with was somehow down the line related to him. And she was actually married. And when her husband found out about her and Peter's relationship, he obviously freaked out and accused Peter of incest. And that also came from a rumor that Peter and his daughter were partaking in incest. And it was actually rumored that they had a son. Not only was Peter sleeping with a woman who he was related to, but it was also speculated that he was sleeping with his own daughter and that they had a child. By this time, many people had said that they had actually witnessed firsthand the werewolf who was tormenting the city. And that is when people started to come forward and say that the werewolf that they had seen was actually missing its left hand, just like Peter. So like I mentioned earlier, nobody is quite sure how Peter lost his left hand. He never had a story of what had happened and people couldn't actually pinpoint an exact time when Peter had lost his hand. 
So it was actually said that a group of villagers had tracked down the werewolf and they had caught it and they had handcuffed its left hand to I guess like a tree or something and when they came back it appeared as if the werewolf had eaten its own left hand to escape the handcuffs. And that is why they, I guess they thought that maybe Peter was the werewolf because the werewolf now would be missing its left hand and so was Peter. In 1589 a group of werewolf hunters were out hunting for the werewolf and that is when they saw the creature. Now they started to chase this creature and they chased him into a group of dense woods. And somehow when they were in the woods, they actually lost sight of the werewolf. And when they caught back up to the werewolf, that is where they found Peter's stump. Now it is unclear if they actually saw the werewolf change from the werewolf into Peter, although somehow I do doubt that. But um, it is unclear if they actually saw that. But when they did see Peter, they began to chase him down. And eventually this is when Peter Stump was arrested because it was believed that he was the werewolf that was haunting Bedenburg. The way that the werewolf hunters had actually captured Peter is completely unclear, but he was eventually captured and brought into the police. And that is when he was arrested and he was brutally, brutally tortured, which eventually led to his confession. In this confession, Peter claimed that he had been practicing black magic since the young age of 12. He said that one day while practicing the black magic, he actually had a deal with the devil. And this is when the devil appeared to him and gave him this magic belt. And he said that when he put this belt on, he would turn into a werewolf. And when he removed the belt, that is when he would return to his natural form as a human. This confession, Peter also obviously confessed to killing all of the livestock that had been murdered in that area, and he also confessed to taking the vanishing children and women. He said that he had first started eating animals for to feed his thirst for blood, but eventually that wasn't enough, and that is when he went on to eat humans. And he said that by this point, cannibalism was just an addiction, and he could not stop. He actually confessed to eating 14 children and 4 pregnant women. He said that while eating the pregnant women, he removed the fetus and ate their hearts. One of the 14 children that he had actually confessed to murdering was actually Peter's own son. And when asked how he did this and why he did this, he said that it was so he could eat his brain. So allegedly, Peter had actually murdered his own son and then ate his brain. Something that I found extremely interesting in this case is during his confession, Peter had actually stated that before he had met with the devil who gave him that belt that allowed him to turn into a werewolf, Peter had actually went out on his own and found a real life wolf skin. Now I guess he found the body of a wolf and he shaved it into a skin. And Peter would put this skin on and wear it and go out and hunt other humans with his own hands. Now, back then that was considered to be black magic. People thought that he was practicing some kind of magic. But now looking at this case, I think that it is quite possible that Peter Stump could have just been a very, very, very mentally ill man. Now we actually know about this case because in the 1590s, after Peter was arrested and all of this had already taken place, they had actually written a 16 page legend about Peter. Now after this case was closed, this legend was actually eventually sent to London and it was completely pretty much forgotten about until the 1920s until an occultist by the name of Montague Summers actually came across this pamphlet, he read it all and then decided to make it public. After being arrested and confessing to being a werewolf, Peter was then executed. Now the execution of Peter is absolutely brutal. He was first put onto a wheel, and I guess it spun, and it was really, really close to a burning hot fire that would eventually tear off Peter's skin. He was then beaten and hit multiple times with an axe before being beheaded. And his mistress were also executed along with him. Both women had been strangled and then were burned at the same time as Peter. Now after all of the torture and everything like that, Peter's head was then cut off and placed on a stick. It was paraded around town with that of a stick with the head of a wolf on it. And after they did this kind of parading around town, his head was then put on display at town hall along with the head of a wolf and the torture wheel in which Peter's skin was ripped from his body while he was on that. It is even said that later after this case kind of passed over, Peter's head was then sewn to the body of a wolf and hung up somewhere within the town. 
There was actually never a case like this in Wittenberg, Germany ever again. But some people don't believe that Peter actually was the werewolf. Some people believe that maybe somebody else in the village was doing this and after this got so severe maybe they just completely stopped. It is completely unknown. But the way that Peter was tortured and there is no way to know if he actually was the one committing these heinous crimes is pretty sad. He could have been completely innocent. But guys, that brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.